Welcome. My name is Chris Christensen, and I'm a technical solutions architect at Cisco. Today I'm going to talk to you about the DNA Center adoption journey map that's new in our 2.3.5 release of Cisco DNA Center. This journey map is going to help you discover all the roles and features that DNA Center has available. It's also going to help guide us through enabling those features. So let's get started. Let's first talk about why we should use the journey map. Well, first of all, DNA Center has an awful lot of integration points. And because of that, many customers just aren't aware of what's really available there. So it's a great way to kind of understand, discover features, discover new integrations. Uh, it's a great way to visualize our adoption along the way as well, because it shows us what we're actually using, what we have installed and, and what other features are out there. And it's also a great shortcut to be able to click on our feature or click on that item and take us to the actual point where we would use it or configure it. All right, so here we are at the home screen for DNA Center. And this is our, like I said, our 2.3.5 release. With this, you're gonna have a banner up here at the top that talks about the adoption journey map. So from there, we can simply click begin your journey and that will take us over here. If you've dismissed that, you can click the hamburger menu up in the left and go to the explore button and that will also take you to the same place here. So what we can see here is we've got four different uh, IT personas that we can take a look at. So AI ops, net ops, dev ops, and sec ops. So depending on what we want to look at, what features we want to talk about, uh, we, can, we can click into those different ones and we'll get the, uh, the same type of pie chart to be able to show us what we're using and, and what integrations and everything are available. Over to the left here, we have this legend so we can see what's in use, what we have installed, maybe what's not available or not even installed. Um, some of this stuff is a, a simple click and then we've used it like our issue dashboard, for instance, if we jump over to that, now we will have used that feature and it will actually turn green and say it's in use. Um, what's great about this uh, pie chart here is our, our different integrations. It's again going to take us to either uh, either using that integration or how to configure it. So if we click on our Thousand Eyes integration, for instance, that's actually going to take us to the settings where we can configure our token um, and actually configure that integration for Thousand Eyes. If I go back to the uh, to the pie chart here, we can take a look at uh, what's available under the AI, AI ops. So I'll just point out a few of these here. Um, we got some great features here. Uh, you know, talk about insights and action. So we'll take a look at some of these features here real quick. Uh, we've got the network reasoner. So this is a great way to, uh, to be able to use machine reasoning uh, to troubleshoot issues and help identify the root cause of issues. We've got some other great integrations like intelligent capture that allows us to take I get packet captures on our access points proactively to troubleshoot wireless issues. Some other things like the 360 degree views, it's part of the visibility. This is a, a great view to uh, bring together all the information and, and information around what a particular device, user, or application is currently experiencing and what it's been experiencing over the last 30 days, for instance. And then we also have uh, like PoE analytics. That's a great one here uh, that allows us to see some insights and data around the PoE services that we're actually using on our network. All right, let's look at the NetOps tab here now. So NetOps is really about uh, autom using automation to simplify creating and maintaining networks with the option to move to a selectively autonomous um, network management as we move forward in the, in the adoption journey. Uh, there's some great features here that really help us along that path, like uh, plug and play. So if we're talking about onboarding here, plug and play is the ability to take a, a new Cisco device, a router, a switch, a wireless controller, access point out of the box, plug it into our network with zero configuration, have it come up, discover DNA Center, assign it to a site, get its uh, operating system, get its configuration, all that good stuff, and, and have it up and running as quick as possible. We've got some other ones like learning a device configuration. So if we've got Brownfield Cisco wireless controllers, we can learn that configuration and create our templates and configuration all within DNA Center automatically. Um, some of these other good ones like uh, RMA workflow, the device replacement here. If we have a failed 
router or switch or access point, we can create a start a device replacement workflow to be able to replace that device exactly the way it was. So with the configuration, operating system, uh, certificates, licensing, all that good stuff that's, uh, that's relevant to that device will be replaced exactly like it was. Uh, and then there's some other ones here, like the uh, templates hub. That's a great uh, point here where we can actually do our template configuration and, and coding there. Um, and then some other ones like the network bug identifier and configuration compliance. All right, now let's jump over to the DevOps tab. This is really about mature APIs, SDKs, um, closed loop integrations, and, and ecosystem integration with, you know, with other, other things here. So we've got integrations with Ansible, Terraform, Python. Uh, you can use the Cisco uh, DNA Center REST APIs. There's all kinds of great stuff here. And really, these are mainly going to take us to the documentation. So if I click on the Python one, we can see that that takes us to the Python module with the documentation about you know, how to use it and all that good stuff there. All right, so now let's take a look at the SecOps persona here. You, what you're going to see here is this is actually going to cross launch us over to a zero trust um, overview here. Uh, that was actually part of a previous release of DNA Center. So this was the first journey map that we released. And you can actually get to that from the provision and then zero trust overview here. Um, so what we can see here is we can see kind of an overview. Uh, there's a lot of good information on here to learn about Zero Trust Workplace and kind of understand what goes into that. There's really kind of three pillars there. There's endpoint visibility, network segmentation, and trust monitoring. Endpoint visibility is really all about identifying those endpoints on our network, grouping them together, and then using policy analytics and traffic flow analysis to create the access policies that we want on our network. Network segmentation is kind of the next step of that where we actually enforce those policies using macro and micro segmentation. And then trust monitoring is that third part where we're talking about continuous endpoint behavior monitoring uh, to identify and isolate any threats that uh, come, up, come upon our network. If we scroll a little bit further down, we can see a very familiar type of pie chart here where we can see all of the all the three different pillars, the, the endpoint visibility, network segmentation, and, and trust monitoring here. And what's really cool about this, uh, this overview map here is that we can look at this and, and customize this to what our zero trust journey is actually going to look like. So we have network connectivity here. So if I am not using Cisco Wireless, for instance, or I'm not planning on it, I can disable that and I can see under the fabric here that wireless dis, uh, disappeared there. We also have some integration with other services here like Cisco ICE, Talos, and then our controller-based application recognition as well. Uh, if I remove with ICE, for instance, I can see that quite a few of these things went away here. So we can kind of get a good idea of what things are dependent upon other services and, and really what we gain or lose by adding those, um, those integrations. So I'll add that back. Um, what's great here is we can kind of see and, and understand the definition of these like uh, policy discovery. If we hover over these, these are gonna actually give us a description of what that is, what that means, um, and what we need to do there. So <clears throat> you can look at this and, and kind of see that, understand where we're at, uh, you know, from a segmentation, visibility, and monitoring standpoint here. And then when we're ready, we can just keep scrolling down here a little bit further and say, okay, now I'm actually done exploring and let's get started. So I can choose to do a couple things. I can either start with creating a network fabric, uh, an actual fabric deployment, or I can say, you know, I already have connectivity, but I just want to, let's get started with the endpoint visibility. In my case, I went ahead on my lab DNA center here, um, went and, and started this already. So I'm gonna go with the endpoint visibility and I'm gonna say, uh, modify my journey. And that's gonna take me back over to, um, actually this is the day in journey map here. So this is kind of the other side of it after we've decided what we're going to do here. And this is great because this is actually going to show us how we're doing on this journey. So I can see up here on the left, I've got, you know, I'm 20% 20, 20 or so of the way there on my journey. I can see my journey map here. 
those different things that I chose to integrate with it, endpoint discovery, policy assurance, switched access, um, all those things I can see that um, I have um, I have enabled here. So again, I can see what I have done and the things that I need to do. Another cool thing that we're doing here is we actually have these in recommended steps. So you'll notice these have different numbers next to them. So I can see that endpoint labeling is actually one that I should do now as opposed to jumping all the way to say policy creation or policy assurance. Um, so this is a great way to kind of understand where we're at, uh, where we're going, what we need to work on to get to that zero trust workplace. And then a little further down, we have an SD access overview where we can see the number of endpoints we've actually discovered, the trust analytics of those. So that is the integration with Cisco Talos. And then we'll see some other stuff around SD access like fabric sites and virtual networks and, and all those good things. All right. Here's some references, uh, some other links that uh, you can click on to learn more about this. Uh, the first one is our DNA Center YouTube channel. That's most likely where you actually found this video. There's a lot of great uh, videos and content out there. If you're wondering how to do something in DNA Center or looking to discover something new there, check that out and subscribe there. Uh, you'll, we're working on a lot of new videos, so there'll be some great new content out there. There's also a link here to the user guide that kind of talks about how to use the journey map in the documentation. Uh, so there's a quick link to that and you can use that. So I want to thank you for watching my video today and happy learning.